Today we're going to look at something that has been heavily requested. What is the best way to store my coffee at home? We're going to be looking at a whole range of storage canisters and containers and trying to understand what impact they have on your coffee and which one potentially might be the best. Now there are 11 different options here in front of me. That is by no means exhaustive, but we're going to look at them from a sort of technology perspective and hopefully you can take what we learn here and apply it to other models on the market and decide if they work for you. To begin with, I'll walk you through each of them here, what they are, who made them, and what they cost. So starting at the beginning, we've got an OXO Good Grips container here. We've got a Hario container for coffee here. We've got the Freeze container, uh, very popular, though this exact model seems to be made or branded by a number of different companies. We've got a little Bodum jar down here. We've got the Coffee Vac system here. This is the Airscape container. This is the Prepara. This is the Mir coffee canister. Here we've got the, the vacuum saver storage system. Here is one from Ancom, and at the end is the Fellow Atmos container. I have divided them into three different categories. The first category is essentially these five here, and these are airtight. Essentially, each of them has a lid that seals the unit, prevents air getting out, but that's the beginning and the end of the technology inside it for keeping coffee fresh. Then we have this middle section, these three here, which are displacement. In some way, there's some system, very clearly obvious in this one, that, that is designed to push any air out. You'll leave some in amongst the beans, but you'll displace quite a lot of air before sealing it airtight. The final section here would be what I would call evacuation, the vacuum canisters. You're, you're not going to pull a perfect vacuum, that's, that's really not going to happen, but you are going to significantly reduce the amount of oxygen, the amount of air, inside the storage container. As you can see, inside of all of these, there is some coffee. This coffee is now about six weeks old, and I wanted to push it quite a long way in the hope that any variance in taste would be much more obvious. And it was roasted for espresso. It's roasted relatively light for espresso, but it is still for espresso. The darker you roast a coffee, the quicker it will stale. Again, I'm trying to amplify some of the differences we might see here in the hope of having a, a more obvious outcome at the end of this. So we're gonna do a, a simple taste test first. Even though it's roasted for espresso, I am still going to cup it. It's the easiest way to do a flavor-based assessment, and I'll be able to see if there's any broad kind of trends here. Does one technology do better than another? After that, we are gonna pull some shots of espresso. Now, one more quick note that is important. Uh, the Airscape, due to issues with being difficult to shop for during the pandemic, turned up after the test had begun. So this one, I can comment on the technology, but not the actual results or tastings from this because it arrived after the rest of the testing had begun. The coffee inside all of these came from the exact same batch. It is the same roast inside all of these, so they should be pretty much identical. Therefore, it didn't make sense to add some coffee to this later, where the variants could come from some roasting variation or even just a difference in aging time. I hope that there are enough insights from this to say whether this is useful or not, and I can certainly talk about the build and the cost and all of that kind of stuff at the end, but it is just worth noting that this could not, sadly, make it into the full round of testing. So as an initial taste test, here's what we're gonna do. We've got 10 cups of coffee steeping away in the kind of cupping tasting style. If you don't know what cupping is, check the video up here. Each of them has been given a random four digit code, so I don't know what's what. They're also been mixed up and I, I, I don't know what I'm tasting in what order. This is kind of an initial tasting to see if there are any big differences between the different technologies there. We should see some consistent results if there are. Each of the ones that are, say, evacuation should taste similar to each other. If they don't, that'll be interesting. If they do, that'll be interesting. In a minute, I'll give them all a quick smell. We'll break them, clean them up, get them ready for tasting, and then we'll taste our way through and just see if there's anything obvious screaming out from a taste perspective. As I go, I'm just gonna to start to push or pull things that I like or dislike a little bit to try and get down to maybe three or four that I like more than others. So what I've done here is a kind of staggering of things. <sighs> There are a couple things that I like more. There's a bunch of stuff in the middle and there's a couple things I like less. It's really close. I have to say I expected a bigger difference between all of these things. It'll be interesting to see if more variation has shown up in other testing, but, but here, if it's not in the same category, well, that's kind of interesting. I'll take it as a win for those particular products, but if it's, if it's not consistent, that'd be a surprise. So having had a look at the results on my laptop, 
broadly there's some trends, which is evacuation does a little bit better. That doesn't mean every canister that's an evacuation canister does better. And while the fellow did well and the vacuum coffee saver did well, this one up here was interesting, which is just the coffee vac, which is just a straight displacement system. So it's not universal, certainly. You had some good results with the straight displacement, but evacuation on average did a little bit better with the exception of the ANCOM that didn't do as well in this test. Generally speaking, a little bit more sweetness and clarity in the evacuated canisters. So yeah, I, I think that's a kind of win for the category uh, and a little win for a few here, but also a win for the coffee vac, which I thought did pretty well. Let's move on to some espresso testing. What I wanted to do with espresso testing was a couple of things. Firstly, what I was interested in was pulling some shots and looking at how much crema I got. I was interested in that because the theory might be that if you held a coffee under vacuum, for example, well, it might degas faster. Would that have a negative impact on your espresso? That seemed like a question worth answering. To do this, I had to create a bit of a weird setup. Now I brought my decent in, which you'll see a little bit more on the channel soon. Uh, and what I wanted to do was use this naked porta filter to pull shots into a funnel directly into a graduated cylinder that I could use to test the volume that I was getting. If that was on a scale, I could measure my mass, I could get my volume, and then ultimately a simple density calculation at the end of it. That would tell me, broadly speaking, how much crema I had, how much of that volume was foam. So I did that. I pulled at the same grind setting, because it was the same coffee, what had been uh, an ideally kind of 28, 29 second shot, though what we saw were some pretty big variances in shot time. Slower shots produced more crema because slower shots seemingly channeled less. And that was really the key. Looking at these shots brew, the faster shots just had a lot more channeling. Now, the, the ordering of this wasn't by category, it was totally random, so I, I don't think it was a case of the grinder itself changing or shifting in some way. There was just a pretty strong correlation. What was interesting to me is that the, the, the method that produced the slowest shots were vacuum canisters. Notably so. At the other end of the spectrum were just the airtight canisters. Those produced espresso with a lot more channeling. The shots looked pretty hideous. They just fell apart really, really, really quickly. So for me, that was a reasonably conclusive test. There's a correlation. I cannot fathom the causation. I don't know why storage method is impacting the flow of espresso this way, but it definitely is. And displacement sat in the middle of the two. So as you'd kind of expect in theory, vacuum did best, displacement did okay, airtight did the worst. Assessing taste on these was kind of difficult because you were assessing not necessarily the flavors retained by the grounds, but the quality of the espresso brew in terms of evenness, which made it not a particularly useful tasting from that perspective. So I'm not gonna talk about any tasting data for espresso. I guess it's time to get them all back. To summarize, I'll break them down category by category, talk about my favorites, my least favorites, the what's, the why's, and at the end of it, hopefully, you can go away and make some informed decisions about how you want to store your coffee and in what you want to store your coffee. So let's talk about the airtight category here. Just the ones that have a simple sealing solution. At the beginning, the OXO is pretty expensive. It's very big, it's kind of a weird shape. The method for sealing is just the simple button on top that when you push this in, presses out and compresses the seal against the side walls, works totally fine. The freeze, also okay, you've got a little dial on top here that you can set your date with, the date that the coffee was roasted or the date that you stored it. I suspect roasted. Uh, only obviously it's got 31 days on there, so you've got to do the maths yourself, but at least you know what's in there. The Harrier one, similar in a way to the OXO, just a little uh, switch to open and close things. Really very similar to, to this. Now the Bodum, probably the simplest container of all of them here. Build, fine, it's glass bottomed, plastic topped, just a little gasket. Surprising that so many of these went for glass. Generally speaking, coffee is better stored away from sunlight, certainly direct sunlight. So, you know, these two are a little bit better. Now this one was interesting to me, the coffee vac. The way this works is a little bit more complicated. You can't get the lid off until you push this button that essentially opens a valve allowing air in and out. So it's a, it's a really clever tight fit. Again, I can't put this on until I push the valve. This doesn't really displace any air, but it is obviously a very good seal. It tasted pretty good, the coffee out of this. So 
whether it was a, an advantage of being stored in the dark, I don't know. But of these, I, I liked this the best. It was also notably cheaper than some of the other options here. Uh, certainly this, I think, is, is oddly expensive for what it is. So as value goes, if you're gonna go this route, this would work fine. Now this does imply that something like a mason jar or something like that would also work very well. And this is comparable in some ways. If you've got a bag that has a zip seal that allows you to reseal the bag properly, well, you may as well use that than one of these. So onto the displacement category. And these are similarly priced. This is a little bit cheaper, but from a build and experience perspective, for me is notably behind on these two. It worked okay. I've got quite large hands, and so getting them into that space, certainly as this got deeper, would become quite uncomfortable. If you've got smaller hands than mine, and I confess I have reasonably large hands, that's not gonna be an issue, but hey, it's an issue for me. The mirror, the build is very nice. Inside its displacement method though, it's a little bit finicky. So you drop this on top of your coffee beans, and then you essentially flip that handle down to create the seal around the edges. That sort of moment when your hand is in the container, again, certainly towards the bottom of the container, is a little bit awkward. As you push to one side, you'll see the whole thing kind of twist. So you're kind of pushing down with one hand, pushing across with the other. It's a little bit awkward for me. It works, I, I, I like it, I think it's very well made, but that moment for me is just a little bit fussy. Now the Airscape works kind of as a hybrid between these two. It's much wider, which I definitely like. The materials are quite simple, and so it's certainly not too expensive. It's about the same price as this, a touch cheaper. But to get this in and just push it down, much easier. And the little flip handle to go down, super nice. I think this is really well made. I think it works well. I would probably pick it as my displacement method of choice of this particular category. Taste-wise, there was not a significant difference between any of them, really. There were broad trends, but, but you could pick that tasting data to pieces. We'll come back to that in a second. And so now the last section, which is the vacuum containers, the evacuation kind of methods. We'll start here with the vacuum coffee saver. This one is a two-piece thing. You've got to get the little valve that sits on top, and you've got to do the awkward pumping thing. You don't really know when you're done. You know it works in that the lid becomes quite hard to get off. To release the valve, is a bit awkward. You have to sort of lift this little valve thing up until you hear the air go back inside and now it's equalized and getting the lid off is merely a little bit difficult and not incredibly difficult. Overall, this system isn't particularly great unless you're maybe using something like this with wine bottles all the time and you've got one of these lying around. It's just, a, it's, it's bulky, it's two pieces. It worked okay. I'm not critical of it as, as a storage device. The, the experience of it is a little bit fussier. And now the Ancom. Now the Ancom have done a bunch of different sizes and they work pretty simply that you just put the lid on and twist. And to release the vacuum, you just push the little button. So overall, it worked very well. They come in a bunch of different sizes. It isn't quite as nice as our last contender though. And in both of these cases, this is true. You don't really know when you've done the job of pulling the air out. That, in a funny sort of way, is one of the big advantages of the Fellow. The Fellow is the most expensive and the Fellow is the nicest. It works the best, it's the most thought through. It's not perfect, but of the ones I tested, it would be my choice to keep. The way it works is very simple. You've got a press to release valve on top. And, and the evacuation method is a, a little bit awkward. It's one of the flaws, I guess. You do a kind of backwards forwards thing. The good news is that it tells you when to stop. You keep doing that until a little green line appears around the vacuum section here, showing that you have a vacuum. When you do this with very fresh coffee, you do see those little gauges uh, depressurize, essentially, because enough gas has come out of the grounds, it seems, that you don't have the same pressure that you did before. That means no new air is getting in, there's just a bit more gas filling that vacuum inside this space. What I saw is that the first few times I sealed it, when I came back to it a day or two later, the little green circle had disappeared. It was just that there was CO2 coming quite rapidly out of those very fresh coffee beans. After a week or so, that simply didn't happen anymore. I don't think it's a fault of the product. I don't think there's a way around it other than you keep going back to it regularly and try to pull more of the CO2 out, but there's no real advantage to that. So, so don't worry about it. My criticisms, if anything, would be that there's a little bit more complexity to this part where you might want to clean. There's no real obvious way to disassemble this or clean this if it got dirty over time. Hopefully you shouldn't have much coffee coming into contact with this. It's not like you're going to be shaking your tin around or storing it upside down or anything like that, but 
it's an issue. And yeah, the, the backwards and forwards is not quite as nice. And so that kind of takes us to an end point, wherein I would say, of the containers tested, I think the Fellow was probably the best. It's the most expensive though, but the features are nice, it looks great, it feels very well made, and it produced good results. But the results from a taste perspective were not what I hoped them to be. I didn't see massive, massive differences in taste between those different coffees, and that was surprising to me. That would also mean that in many situations, I'm probably happy storing coffee inside a resealable bag, assuming that bag is well made, airtight otherwise, and obviously dark and not transparent. But if that isn't an option to you, if you want something different, if you don't want the bags around, if you just don't like them, if you're getting coffee delivered in something that isn't designed for longer term storage, and you're looking for a container, my preference would be for the Fellow. But I also liked a couple of the others. I was impressed by the Coffee Vac. I think the Airscape is well made too. They would certainly be good options as well. In terms of value for money, that's up to you. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts, your experiences. Have you had this? Do you have these? Did you buy them? Have you had a very different experience to me? Do you like some more than others? Did you start using one and then stop? Have you started using one recently and have you seen improved results? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to know your experiences. Leave them down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.